you guys. I sound like crap because I am under the weather. I am sick, but don't worry. I'm going to be putting out a new video today. Um, reaction video. The makeup mommy video that me and mom have recorded got messed up. But it's okay because she said we could do another one. And it's really no front. So I do have pictures that um, I will add to that video later so you guys can so you guys can see. Um, you guys check out my sister. Uh... Dee Dee, here's her. That's her right there, and her awesome makeup that she does. The little snapshot pictures. I'm gonna put a link to her channel um, at the end of this video, and also in the description below. If I can't get it at the end of this video for some odd reason, I can never do it anymore. Now it's kind of weird, but okay. And then also don't forget to check out my brother's um, music and the books that I have written. But this video is a little different today. This video I wanted to make a while back. Um, I wanted to make it, and I didn't want it to be in the midst of all, you know, <sighs> oh, sorry, <laughs> so nasty, um, what I didn't want it to be in the midst of, you know, just like, the craziness that's happening in the world, even though it needs to happen, like, I know you guys have seen, you know, draw my life videos, and let's just be real, I can't draw. I could probably draw stick figures, so that's about it. I'm not that professional type of drawer. I'm not that, you know, cartoony kind of draw. I'm not. So I'm better off talking out my feelings so you guys see the the see my expressions, you know what I mean? And nothing nothing against those that did a draw in my life. I know Markiplier did one and I know uh Major Look did one and I know Nikki Perkins from Jamie and Nikki did that did one too. Um, I don't know if Jamie did one at all. I don't think he did, but I know Nikki did one. Um, I think Jack Septic Guy did one. Yeah, yeah. I, I do watch gamers on YouTube, so yes. Um, but when the time passes and I just want to be scared or just want to laugh, I watch my I watch gamers. Jack Septic Guy, Markiplier. I do watch Crank Games. Like, what is up, my cranky crew? Yeah, I love, <laughs> I love them. The Razbowski, Papa Raz. I love Papa Raz. Like, let's be real. He's kind of he's really cute. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> he really is. That's just me. I mean, hey. Um, <laughs> besides, I always have a thing for guys with accents. So Jack and Raz is just like, excuse you. <laughs> They're probably gonna look at this and be like, excuse. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. No, this is just something for my nose because I really have been sick. I told you guys that my kids have been sick. Oh, God. It sounds so terrible. But they gave it to me as a present to mommy just out of the generosity of their sick little hearts. They wanted to pass it on to me so I could share their sickness. No, I got sick from them because they kept coughing. And my oldest doesn't like to cover his mouth. So, but, um. I'm getting off subject. I'm giving you a little happy before I hit you with the hard truth. Um, this is a... You guys can obviously see by the title. This is a, a bullying story video. And bullying is something very near to me. Bullying is something that I do not like. I don't like it. I hate it. Mostly because I was bullied and I bullied for a short amount of time. I was mostly bullied. I didn't even bully as much, but when I did, I felt terrible about it. And and yeah, I'll explain after the video. Um, if you guys stop crying, cause I cried when I recorded this. I recorded this twenty sixteen. So, this is before I had Micah. This is before I even got pregnant with Micah. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so, I hope that it reaches a lot of people. I hope that it touches those that have been bullied or feel like they don't know what to do. So, Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go blow my nose so you guys can listen to this. Okay? All right. I'm, I'm going to go. All right. Just enjoy the video if, if you can. Hi, my name is Miss Kia. I go by Kiki or Kia if it's a little harder to say my name. I wanted to share my story about when I was bullied. I would say 
bullying started for me when I was, I want to say seven, probably a little later on than that, but I was, I'm going to go with seven. I was seven years old, I was in school. At the time, I lived in New Jersey, born and raised in New Jersey, lived there half of my life. The bullying started there. I was picked on a lot for my hair back then because I had braids and my hair was extremely long so when I had braids in my hair I was picked on a lot I told my mom about it and she told me something that now I hold dear to my heart. She said, they're jealous of you. They don't have long hair like you. And um, it's something that they envy. Those that envy you like that will do anything to break you down. So I kept hearing that and I kept ignoring it. I sometimes sat in a corner by myself. I will not play with anyone. I made friends with people I thought were my friends like that. They weren't. The bullying kept continuing up until I got into, or after I got out of middle school. Throughout those years, I've been, I've been called, in their unique way, I've been called fat. I legitimately remember one girl asking me if I was pregnant. Keep in mind, I'm in the fourth grade. And she asked me if I was pregnant. I said no. Until, I met, until one of my friends told me what that meant. So, I was upset by that. I thought being a bully would at least help a little bit, but it didn't. And I've gone back and I've apologized to them and to those and now because that will be the, that's the hardest thing for anyone to do if you've been bullied and you try to bully someone just to make yourself feel better and then you go back and apologize years later it's a hurt thing and it's a hard thing because you don't want to because they hurt you to the point where it's like you know what forget you but no I was fourth grade in school. Sorry for the glare. That's me in the corner next to my teacher. It's my class. Fourth grade class, 2001-2002. I wish I had more pictures. I dressed like that. I looked like that. I was really confident. I had crushes. Crushes didn't want me because the way I looked, I guess. They wanted the skinny girls. They wanted the ones that looked pretty, that would make them, you know, look twice. Or the girls that had a reputation. Not something bad, but something that they're looking for. Okay. The bullying didn't stop. I went into a real bad depression state when I was in middle school. Because of, like, kids making fun of me, tried to be sexy, wearing short skirts, tight tops. I, had, I mean, I had push-up bras and whatnot, but, and all that, nothing worked. So I just, I was about to give up. I never cut. I never did. I didn't see the fact of prolonging it by cut when I could just end it. Just write, started writing letters, started writing notes. And one, I think, I left one behind. And uh, my Spanish teacher at the time, he was a great teacher, he found a note that I had accidentally left behind. Because it fell out of my notebook and gave it to the guidance counselor. I'm sorry, uh.
it went to the guidance counselor. And I sat down with my mom. She was there, the principal, my teacher, and the guidance counselor. Because in the note, I stated that I was close to killing myself, and I was. I really was. I felt like, you know what? Screw it. But, and I was 13. They found an outlet for me. It took my brother, it took me going to a football game with my mom and my, my family to watch my brother play. And I saw the marching band. And from then, from middle school, I joined the marching band. And that was my outlet for frustration. I felt a release. But when I felt like I was going two steps forward with marching band, I felt like I was going five steps back because every day I went back to school, I <laughs> still, it's like I still didn't fit in. Like being the band geek was the weird thing. And my friends came and helped me and had some mentors. I moved from from New Jersey to Virginia when I was 14, and I didn't realize how many friends was going to miss me, my marching band included. Because my self-esteem was beaten. The remainder of the video, I'm sorry it got cut right here, you guys, but the remainder of the video, it's I said that with marching band it was one of the biggest outlets for me because I felt like you know I was accepted I felt like I could connect but even marching band has its clicks um it hurt a lot to know that being different in middle school felt like a bad thing being different in middle school felt like you don't even fit in so why are you even here you know what I mean um I I like it it was a hard it was really hard time for me back then and um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the video I don't even remember if I did and if I didn't then okay but uh there's been times where you know a lot of the bullying came from me being sexually assaulted. This is a personal story, yes, but it's some story that needs to be shared on why I was bullied and why bullying means a lot to me as far as fighting it. Um, sorry. It, uh, it, it's, it was just like, you know, no one knows that story. I mean, my mom knows. No one else in my family knows this story. Uh, they will until they, when they see this video, whenever they click this video. Uh, I'm still sick. I'm sorry for the sniffling. It is so annoying. Um, but it's a, uh, it was a hurting thing. And to be my age... And at that time, and what happened to me, I, I felt worthless. I felt, you know, that's why I was so desperate to fit in with everyone. Short skirts, um, stockings, I wore high heels. I started becoming a girly girl when I got into high school, but I was still a tomboy because I love sports, I love football. Um, and I love soccer. I love hockey. Um, I absolutely, I mean, and I absolutely, my son got me into this, but I love NASCAR, which is kind of weird, but it's okay. <sighs> I like fast cars. So, it's, uh, I'm getting way off subject here. Um, so, um, it's, a. Uh, it was a tough time for me, and just because I was somewhat of a tomboy from middle school, and I moved to from New Jersey 
to Virginia, it transferred a little bit. Granted, there were more widows in Virginia than there were in New Jersey. It's like New Jersey, you have to be, you know, a certain way. You know, you have to be this certain person. Whereas in Virginia, you can be yourself. But for me, it was like you can be yourself, but not too much. You know what I mean? I fit in there. I did. Um, I, it, it, I don't even know how to describe this. It was a trial base for me because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to react. I'm like, I have friends that are like me. They're weird. They're crazy. They're big geeks. I love it. They love anime as much as me. They love rock music as much as me. They love anything oriental as much as me, like Japan and China as much as me. They love learning new languages. They suck at math, just like me. I felt, you know, appreciated, and I felt wanted. Granted, it's not like I didn't feel like that way, because my mom instilled it in us that if you validate yourself, your children before you before they walk out this door, they feel like they'll conquer the world. She did. But then it doesn't stop people from still judging. We're judgmental in retrospect. And you can't sit here and lie about... You can't sit there when you're listening to this and lie and say that I don't judge. I don't judge. Even I do. Even though I say I'm not judgmental, what you do is what you do. What you do seriously, what you do is what you do. I don't I don't like to judge people and I feel terrible when I do. It feels makes me feel like, oh God, really? No. For what reason? Why? Why even? No. Let's fix this. So that's why I'm like I'm just in a matter of I need to share this. I need to talk to people. I need to tell my story. Because there are children out there. There are kids out there. There are teens out there. There are some adults out there that are being bullied. And yeah, oh yeah, adults can get bullied too. You have no idea. Um, and they feel like they have no way out. Like I said, I was close to taking my own life at 13. I just turned 13. I just turned 13 and I was ready to get I was ready to do it. I was ready to end it all. Of course you guys know my birthday is in October. Um sorry. Oh god. Uh I was playing with my hair in this scene because I was trying to segue away from somewhat of the sadness a little bit. Didn't work cuz I went right back to it. But anyway. I was 13. And I was ready to go. I couldn't do it. I felt like it. But then, I, of course, joined the marching band and that whole story. Um, it's a, it was a trying, very trying time for me in middle school. It's a, it's a trying time for anyone that goes to middle school. Like, especially when you go to middle school, you're going to be in a depressing state. I'm going to just let you guys know that now. Um, if I have any young viewers that watch this, yes, or watch my channel. Hi, how are you? But you are going to be in a depressing state when you get into middle school because it's like you're trying so hard to fit in. So that way when you go into high school with all the people that you were in middle school with, it's like, yeah, I got this. I got this. No, you don't. Be yourself. That's all you got to do. Just just be yourself. Be who you are. Be You're the best you you can be. You are the best you you can be. Honestly, I didn't realize this until I was in my junior year of high school. And it, it drives me nuts to figure out to know that why didn't I feel this way? So, yeah, that, that whole ishness. <laughs> Guys, so, like I was saying in the recording, like, you are the best you you can be. There's no one else out there that is like you. Um, the rest of the video, I mean, I don't know why the sound went out like that, but it did. Uh, it was just... I don't know, man. I felt like bullying was, you know, a way of helping me. And then what stemmed from the whole bullying was the fact that, yeah, I, I was... As a kid, I was eight. Sorry. 
um, and it was my family member who I don't like to talk to a lot. Um, I won't disclose the name. I told my brother about it, and uh, he wanted to kill him. But we was already in Virginia at the time, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't do anything about it. So I told my mom. I didn't tell my mom until we moved here. Until I graduated high school, and when I had my first job, it was like the begin. It was like the mid year of that year. Um, actually, no, it was mid-year of the next year, like 2011, when I finally told my mom what happened to me. And I know some, I know it kind of stems, but especially for me, you know, I'm a little heavy, I'm a little big girl, you know, it's got wrong with a little thickness. Like my girl, Love Journey says, and I don't disappoint, you know, I'm, I'm a little thicker than a snicker. And I love snickers anyway, so yes. Okay. <laughs> So, I'm not proud of what I did when I was being bullied. I regret it almost every day when I think about it, especially and it breaks my heart to see the stories of these kids being bullied and then something tragic happens because of the bully. Um, I'm so shiny. Ugh. I just want those to know that people are going to talk. They're going to talk about you to the day you die. And there's nothing you can do about it. They're going to talk about you after you die. But then when you get older, you know what's going to happen. Some may be like me and be like, why in the world did I act like that as a, as a child or as a, as a teenager? There's no, there's no justice. There's no peace. And there's no pleasure in bullying someone that's different from you or they act different from you or they do something different from you I'm still bullied to this day I mean I mean it's because of my size and because of who I am and uh, you know I am a let's just put it on the table I am a black woman who loves anime heavy metal musicals Anything culturally oriented. I love learning different languages. I am an old school 90s baby that loves watching Hey Arnold and Cat Dog and all those above. Um, I love the old school R&B. Yes. Like, if you guys don't know more, like, my story, well, here it is. I have two mixed children, and I am very happy about that. No, I do not date black men and that is really I'm being really serious I will put it out there on the line I do not date black men there's nothing against black men I just don't want to that's my personal preference and my personal choice I don't so, <laughs> which is why I'm with my man now and uh and uh I I just you know I'm laying it out on the line I'm putting it all on the table I don't feel the need to uh, have things like bullying. I mean, it still affects me to this day. They affect me. Because then I think about what I did. Or what did I do, you know, to have you bully me? What have I done? Except breathe air. Except exist. What, because I do one thing? You hold that against me. You hold it above my head. You know you waste your time and energy and a little bit of your strength making sure that the person that you're bullying stays miserable because it gives you a little pleasure. That pleasure don't last. It does not last at all. And there's no pleasure in that. What can you gain from talking about somebody? What can you gain from making fun of them? What can you gain from beating them up? What Oh, because I know they know that I'm the best. Da, da, da. You ain't nothing. Let me just be real right now. You're nothing. If you beat someone up that does nothing to you, you're weaker than they are. Because they're strong just for sitting there taking that BS from you. And you have, it's like, for what reason, you know? I Granted, I was never beat up in high school. I had stuff thrown at me. Or not in high school. I had, and that was in, like, middle school. Um, in elementary school, I had milk poured on me. They said it was accident. 
the strawberry milk too, which was good, it, and it was completely sticky. Um, but someone pushed over my lunch. I got punched in the chest when I was in elementary school. Um, I didn't do anything about it because we were playing basketball and the teacher didn't see it. Um, and and plus her eyes were going every which way. I mean, we had two teachers in there, but they both were focusing on different things and didn't see it. Um, in middle school, I got called names of the Wazoo. I tried really hard to fit in. Um, there's never been a time where I thought I was happy with what I was doing. There's never been a time I thought that I could handle that I couldn't handle uh, being bullied as you like, you know, oh, okay, whatever. Who I am as a person, who you are as a person, it either scares people, they don't like difference, they don't like change, or they're jealous because they want that. You do it the best you can just to be yourself when they don't like it. They want to see you suffer. They want to see you be miserable. And that's sad because you're minding your own business and it's like, you think you're special and all this and da 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 and then you ain't nothing, you ain't this, and neither are you for really saying anything negative. Let's just be real here. All right? Because, there's, like I said, there's nothing to gain from being bullied. There's nothing to gain from bullying. And, like, for real, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. A long time and uh, it's kind of long because I am kind of you know, I never want to I never like to I'm sorry let me change that I never like to hear that a child killed themselves because they were being bullied on social media or they were being bullied and everything else first off the ones that bully online on social media Y'all are just cowards. Can I just be real about that? That's judging, but check this out here. If you can't do it to my face like a grown person, then and you hide behind a computer because you too, you too little chicken to say it in front of me, no. you a coward. I'm sorry. I'm being really real. I'm being so... I'm being... I sound the hood. I sound like a sick hood rat. <laughs> um, but... I'm, that's just how I am. That's just how I feel. That's just how you guys can interpret this the way you want to. Um, I mean, I mean, if you are bullying somebody, look, it is what it is, honestly. But if you're being bullied, know that you don't have to go that route. Know that you have people that love you. Like there was a live Facebook video. It got deleted, thank God. And I seen I did, and I had the great misfortune of seeing it of a young girl who hung herself on Facebook Live. And her mother was calling her. And when she didn't and of course when she didn't answer, the phone rang and then the video cuts. The video cuts off after like the second call. She hangs herself outside on the side of their house in like darkness. It was like the sun was setting, and I'm like, this poor baby. These poor kids. These are kids. These are kids, and then there are college kids that are doing this too. There's nothing that breaks my heart more than to see a six year old kill themselves because they're a boy. There's nothing that breaks my heart more than to see the college girl kill herself when she has a bright future ahead of her because she was bullied. Like, are you kidding me? What pleasure do you have out of that, honestly? You let me know what pleasure you have out of that, and then we can talk. Other than that, I don't want to hear it. Ooh. Baby. Um, but you guys, that about wraps it up for me. Gotta get the baby. Screaming Mimi. That's what I call him. Um, gotta take care of this. Hopefully before the video. <laughs> Hopefully before the video. Um... Before we do it, me and mom do a video today. It is Sunday. She is in church and I'm home. So, oh God, it sounds terrible. Uh, but I will see you all later. I love you all. Please be safe and be nice to each other. Bullying does nothing but make you feel bad on the inside in the future. I'm being so serious. All right. Bye, y'all.